world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. We bring the sacrifice. I said we bring the sacrifice. Come on, sacrifice something. Sacrifice, sacrifice. Your energy, your praise, the lifting of your hands, the hollering, it is a sacrifice. Lord, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a Lift our hands this morning and worship the Lord. And with thanksgiving, I'll be holy, acceptable, sanctuary. I dare you to stretch your hands and say, Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary. Lord, so pure and holy. Lord, we want to be tried. I'll be holy, acceptable sanctuary for you. Oh, come on, Zion. You say yes, Lord. Come on, Zion. Yes, Lord. How many got a yes in your spirit? the Lord this morning. Come on, tell him I love you. Oh Lord, I really love
the Lord a tunnel yes this morning. My soul. Come on, let it come out. Yes, Lord. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. We come to praise the name of Jesus this morning. Tell your neighbor, I praise his name. I praise his name. Hallelujah. Today, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Tell the Lord, I'll praise your name.
Don't worry about it. Don't worry. So I praise him just because he's God. Not just because I'm blessed, but just because he's God. Can we lift our hands and just take a moment and honor him because he's God. Come on, open your mouth right there. This is not transactional, this is transformative. Because he's God. The God of all circumstance. The God over my life. If he never does anything else, he's still God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift this song. It says, when I come into your presence, when?
Just because he's God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. He is God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Just because. Glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the sweet sounds that is coming, amen, from our praise team today. Come on, let's give God a praise for them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a wonderful thing when saints of God allow God just to use them mightily. Praise God. Amen. Not only for their benefit, but to benefit us as well. Glory to God. Amen. I needed that. I don't know about you. I needed it. Glory. Hallelujah. He's God all by himself. I know he's my God. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Thank you. Stand with me if you please. Glory to God. We're looking to the Lord. Father, we do thank you. We praise you, O God, for one more, one more time. You have brought us safely over the dangerous highways, God, to this place, O God, hallelujah, where we gather together to lift your holy name. We thank you, Lord, even for waking us up this morning, getting us started on our way, Jesus. Lord, we come looking for a mighty time in you this day. Come in the room, Jesus. Minister to our needs today. You know what everybody's standing in need of, God. We ask you just to have your way, O oh God. Touch each and every one of us from the crown of our head to the soul of our feet. Bless us, heal us, strengthen us, O oh God. That we continue to look to you. For truly you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We come putting everything in your hand, Jesus. Use us today for your glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 8. I'll start reading at verse 28. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Thank you, Jesus. For whom he did for new, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the images of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, who he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all us all. How shall we not within him also freely give all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justifies. Who he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, persecution, 
Laman, a nakedness of pearl, a sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angel, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory to God. Certainly we give honor to God. We thank God for the reading of his word. Amen. That we live and grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Your mercy. 
that true ministry begins with true transparency. So I'm going to be transparent on this morning. When my husband and I were dating, um, and as many of you already know, he's a stickler for time. And he would come to my grandmother's house and he would pick me up and he would use the phone at the bottom of the building and he would say, I'm here, are you ready? I would say, I need five more minutes. He would come back to the phone at the entry of the building and say, it's been five minutes, it's been 10 minutes, are you ready? Give me five more minutes. Well, one time he came to pick me up and Deacon Basil didn't feel like waiting five more minutes. Got downstairs, looked where I usually see him parked, and Deacon Basil was gone. Deacon Basil left his betrothed. To this day, when we are counseling people, I say and tell that story. If you are ready, you won't have to get ready. Well, so it is in the spiritual realm, and so it is with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's coming back, and he's coming back soon. Only this time, we won't have five more minutes. This time, we won't have 10 more minutes. And this time, there will be no do-over. If you get ready, you won't have to say, wait. You won't have to say, Lord, give me one more chance. If you are ready, you won't have to get ready. I said, if you are ready, you won't have to get ready. That is for everybody under the sound of my voice. From the pulpit to the door, from the oldest to the youngest, if you get ready, you will not have to be ready. On behalf of our pastor, Apostle W. Michael Fields, our assistant pastor, Elder Ronald Young Sr., and this, the entire Greater Refuge Temple family, we beseech you on today. We beg you on today. Get ready. Stay ready, be ready, and if by chance you don't have a church home, won't you consider this temple of worship where we are, we're determined to be ready. God bless you in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm standing before you because this month we celebrate Clergy Appreciation Month. And the Lord has blessed us with some awesome preachers. Our pastor, our assistant pastor, our youth pastor. Greater Refuge Temple, Washington, D.C. has been blessed. And I'm starting it off. Those that want to make presentations, I ask you to line up here to my right. Um, I'm starting it off um, to appreciate our pastor, our assistant pastor, our youth pastor. They're doing a phenomenal job, and we love them. And from the church, we just want to say thank you, Bishop Elder Young. Minister Smith, we wanted to say thank you for all that you're doing and all that, you're, all that you've done and all that you're still doing, and we do appreciate you. This is just a little token from the church of our appreciation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. On behalf of the um, missionary department, we would like to present to Bishop Fe Apostle Fields a little love offering. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for all that you do, for laying on the altar for us, praying for us, holding us up before God. We thank God for you. God bless you. And Elder Young, our second, second best. <laughs> we want to thank God for you. This is a little token of our love. We appreciate you. Thank you all that you're doing for just backing up Bishop Fields and us. And God bless you. And Minister Trey, we want to thank you for being uh, so good and helping out to the kids and doing a great work. You're doing a great work, and we're happy, glad, proud of you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. My mouth is so loud, I didn't think I need a mic. Praise God, praise God. <clears throat> Apostle Fields, praise the Lord. From the mother's board. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you so much. From the mother's board, Bish uh, Apostle, give you your title. The Mother's Board appreciates you so much. You just don't know how much. From earth to glory, we appreciate you so much. And uh, when you come on the 12 noon prayer on Thursdays, it's so, it's so uplifting to us. And it's so encouraging to us. And I said us, I don't want to make this personal because it's for everybody. Hallelujah. And I thank God for you to spend your valuable time to come on 12 noon prayer every Thursday. We thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you so much. Uh, down through the years, I've been knowing you since the 80s. When my husband, hallelujah, Ella Keith Davis, and God, God, we had a church, God, God, the church down in Fettysburg. We rem I remember you from back then, baby. And you have never changed. Just got stronger, and I thank God for you. Thank you, thank you. I'm young, you next. I'm not going to say the next best, but I'm going to say the next. Man of God, hallelujah. I give you the honor too. Because of 12 new prayer, you are also uplifting and encouraging. Hallelujah. And I mean that from everybody. And we thank you. We thank you so much for your valuable, hallelujah, valuable prayers. And, and, and give us space for testimony. You know I'm going to testify. At my church at Golgotha, where we had testimony service, and the people didn't want to stand, and I said to myself, oh, Lord, I wouldn't mind getting up again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Thank you, Elder. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, tell my, hey, he's good, saints. He's good. 
recognize and appreciate Minister Trey Smith. Thank you. Thank you for being, thank you for being the young people's minister. I've noticed you, I've, I've, I've observed you, and you seem like you're right on point with the young people. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, baby. We appreciate your humbleness. We appreciate you, your talent. We appreciate you also, in Jesus' name, from the Mother's Board. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I am standing on behalf of many auxiliaries on today. <laughs> Medicine to Deacon Wise Guild. Can you please stand? Nurses Unit. Who else? Hospitality. Uh, somebody else sent me their car. I guess they're afraid to come up here and speak. <laughs> Not afraid. They're a little shy. Yes, sir. Who else am I missing? I don't want to leave anybody out. Nurses Unit, Nurses and Deacon Wives Guild, Hospitality. That was it? Okay. So, um, you always try to find the right words to say, and you think of a lot of words to say, and you say, oh, this is going to sound good. I don't know if I should say this. Um, but... In all of that gathering my thoughts, I look at uh, Apostle Fields and I look at Elder Young and I say, wow, I serve the same God that they serve. They are a true testament of strength, of continuing, of holding on. And sometimes, we don't like what they say, what they do, what they wear, what they teach. And the list can go on, but I appreciate it because it's helping me to grow and to make heaven my home. And Bishop taught a lesson on Wednesday about being a strong church. And he asked us, are we family? And I quickly said, no. And it had me to reevaluate my thoughts, my words, my walk with God, because they are true living examples of that. And as Bishop always says that God is the boss, he has to answer to his boss, not us. Elder Young has to answer to his boss, not us. 
And so when we don't like what we do like, they got to answer to God, not us. And so I have to put aside my feelings, my flesh, and consider myself. So I've been under leadership. I'm not going to say bad, but not so good. And I appreciate these men on today. Amen. Amen. We give honor to where honor is due. And we're always worried about how they treat us. We need to worry about how we treat them. Amen. And giving them the honor and the respect that they're due. And I'm not leaving Trey Smith out because he don't like for us to say Minister Trey. <laughs> but he is a living example of an awesome leader. Um, we have our board meetings and we're able to express, we're able to be vulnerable. And one thing I love about Trey, he's very transparent and we can have a moment, but we still love. We come back to church and we still speak. We still love on one another. We don't walk away angry and upset. You need good leaders like this in your life. Amen. And I believe it's a testament that you all appreciate them on today because you're here and you're sitting under them. And so I beseech you all to continue to bless these men of the God of God that God has set us for this house at the appointed time. So without further ado, and all the properness, we thank you. Amen. Bishop and Elder Young got a swag that I don't, I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're swag. They're just so poised and cool with it. Elder Young always coming in the button this. <laughs> when, we, when we first started, I always told my husband, like, babe, his sock game is always on point. <laughs> And when I look at Bishop, I just say, the Bronx. But I'm in D.C., so I say South Side. <laughs> but we love you. I love you. I love you. Thank God for the three of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I stand on behalf of the music department of Greater Refuge Temple, D.C. That includes the youth praise team, the praise team, and UVR, the musicians. I thank God for our pastor. Amen. His prayerfulness, his steadfastness. Amen. That he preaches in season and out of season. Amen. I watched you worship even while you were in pain. And that led me to know that you're real for the Lord, that you're really trusting in the Lord, and you're steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, no matter what. Um, I'm sure you don't always feel like coming and always feel like doing, but you do it anyway. And we just thank God for you. Amen. To Elder Young, thank you so much for standing in the gap all the time and lifting up his arms. We can count on you to be consistent. I, I'm grateful to you for that. Amen. And Minister Trey, Thank God for you just being invigorating and really blessing the young people to bringing out their talents and even acknowledging them and all their accomplishments. We thank God for all that you do in ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. I thank you, Lord, for, for being here. Uh, I'm Deacon Robinson. This is Deacon Miles. We're here to represent the Sunday School Department. Amen. You know, there's a saying that says, you preach to reach and you teach to keep. Amen. And we teach the Word of God here, and I thank the Lord for that. Amen. And, and it's special here. Uh, I've been to many churches, and there's just one or two Sunday school teachers, amen. But here, amen, we have a diverse set of teachers, 
amen, that love to teach the Word of God. Amen. So I'm going to ask the Sunday school teachers all to stand. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So you can just sit right there. Amen. So uh, just to let you know, our, all of our ministers and elders teach here for Sunday school. Amen. And some of our uh, what do you want, choir members, amen, they teach as well. We have our deacons, amen, that also teach, amen. And we teach online as well as in person. Amen. And our online Sunday school reaches over 300 people a week. Amen. Amen. And I'm also thankful for Lady Peggy, Lady, Lady Peggy Lee Young. Amen. For all the work that she has done. So I'm able to stand on that foundation and hope to take it higher. Amen. But I can't do it with all of you. Amen. So I would love to see everyone at Sunday school. Amen. 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 Also, I want to thank Apostle Fields. Amen. He teaches every fifth Sunday. Every fifth Sunday. And then, again, our Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock online and 9.30 in the sanctuary. We only here for one hour, amen, but we have a lot to unpack, to, to unpack for you, amen. And the nice thing is if you miss it, you can also go online to see it because we save it online on our Facebook page. So without further ado, uh, also I want to thank Elder Young and Minister Trey, amen, because they also teach as well in our Sunday school department, amen. Thank you, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. I'm Candace Townsend, and I am delighted to represent the Usher Board today. Um, yes, yes, and they are standing in the back on the job today. And so we wanted to take a moment to express our gratitude and appreciation for our leadership here today. Um, this is a small token of our appreciation. We know that we could never repay you for all that you do for this church. But we love you and we want you to know that we don't take you for granted. We appreciate you and we love you and we are praying for this church and that God will continue to bless this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, I stand corrected. I was asked to recognize you and your lovely wife. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. Hallelujah. I stand on behalf of the GRTDC Brotherhood. Can I have all the brothers of GRTDC stand? If you're a man, you can stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on behalf of the brotherhood, we want to give, give you a token of our appreciation. You know, the Bible talks about God giving pastors after his own heart. And we truly have a pastor after God's own heart. I thank God for you, Bishop Apostle Fields. I'm sorry. And uh, truly, you have been a blessing to us. Uh, we are a family. I look at you as my dad, and I got a great uncle, and I got a brother over here. So we are family. And, uh, you know, I've seen us, you know, cry. I've seen you preach the word in a time when it was so hard. And so we appreciate you, sir. We truly appreciate you because the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come, sir. So this is from the brotherhood in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Now she'll be first, right? <laughs> and if you read the Bible, you'll see the rest of that. <laughs> but praise the Lord, we are excited this morning and glad to be here. Amen. To honor you as men of God, co-laborers in the kingdom of God. Amen. We working together. And I like for all my fellow ministers and elders to stand. All the ministers and elders. Stand. And then that includes Trey, our assistant pastor, Ronald Young, and our chief pastor, the head, the angel of the house. My God, I get a quick in this now because without an angel of the house, we could not hear from God. If you read the book of Revelations, the Lord spoke to the angel because the angel has a responsibility to speak to us. And I appreciate you because you bring the word of God and you teach sound doctrine. And I would not stay here. Did y'all hear me? I said I would not stay here if he was not preached sound doctrine. Last Sunday was awesome. I pray for the move of God in this place and to use you, Apostle Fields, because there are many souls out here that need to be saved. And I saw the beginning of great things last Sunday. Because people came to the altar and they cried out to God after they heard the word of God. There was no special invitation. It was the word that compelled them. It was the move of God in this place. And for that, I'm honored to serve under you, serve with you, and to lift up your hands. And for the men that are serving under you also, that includes Elder Young. Amen. You have exemplified leadership. You have exemplified a faithfulness. And truly, you have shown us that you can do the same thing to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You serve in distress, pain, and sorrow, and joy, good times, and bad. And both of you are a strong example for me to know how to move forward in the Lord. And Brother Trey, as a young man in the Lord, I thank God for you. Amen. That even though our pastor entrusted into you to lead the youth. Amen. That's a great responsibility. And as I have expectation for my pastor and for my assistant pastor, I have a great expectation for you. Amen. And I believe and pray for you that you won't let us down. Amen. And for that today, we just have a token of our appreciation. Wish it could be more. So when you look inside, <laughs> amen, use it as the Lord allows you to in Jesus name. Yes, I, I can. I will stand as Minister Trey Smith today. <laughs> um, on behalf of the ABYPU um, as a whole, I want to say uh, we love you all and we appreciate you uh, for just entrusting in us and allowing us to be seen and be heard uh, uh, in this ministry. Um, on a more personal note, uh, I want to say to Elder Young, I want to say thank you uh, for allowing me to be myself. Uh, I want to say thank you for uh, the conversations that we've had, uh, whether we agree or disagree. Um, you've allowed me to express myself and I've never felt judged. Um, and I think that's extremely important um, in this position. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, uh, being in your seat. Um, some people who sit in your seat only want to get to his seat. Uh, but God has graced you for where you are and you stand firm in that. Your, uh, your faithfulness is admiring and is also uh, unwavering. Um, and we appreciate you for that. Uh, apostle, uh, I want to say apostle, yeah. Bishop Apostle. <laughs> I want to say, uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, believing in me. Um, 
Uh, when I first took this position, I came with a lot of unconventional uh, ways of doing things. Uh, but I, I thank you uh, for seeing past those things and, and, and seeing my spirit and my heart for this church and for these youth. Um, and you understand that just because it's not the same method doesn't mean that it's a change of doctrine. Um, and so you allowed us to move in the method that we do. And because of that, uh, as I shared with you, this is October. We've this year had 23 youth and young adult baptized in Jesus name. So I want to say thank you to both of you uh, just for believing me and trusting me to lead and serve. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I got a couple of announcements to make. Um, don't forget, this afternoon we have altar training. Amen. That's for everybody that is working the altar. Praise God, all the ministers. Amen. The Everybody, you know who you are. It's got directly after this service today. Bishop uh, want to see up, see us all. So come on down and join in in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Don't forget on the 19th, amen, from 10 to 12 a.m., Gerard DTC for additional detail. I mean, this is for the ushers board. The ushers will have training. Okay, and also on Saturday the 26th, we're going to have a guest preacher here. Amen. Pastor uh, District Elder Shy. Amen. From New Jersey. He's coming with his church. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's the Leadership Appreciation Day. Leadership Appreciation Day. So come. Amen. And be part of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are friends, right? I mean, I guess if we got a, a real slow clap because you didn't know what was coming next, did you? It's offering time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Our deacons is coming. Our ushers is taking their place. Amen. If you need a offering envelope, just raise your hand and someone will bring one to you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Deacon Myers will be in the back. Amen. If you want to give electronically, you can do that as well. With your offering in your hand, let's stand. Thank you. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give all honor to you, Lord, as we come to be a blessing to this house of God. We ask you to take it and use it for the building of thy kingdom. Bless everyone that have, even the one that have not. In Jesus' name, amen. We ask you to turn now, face the walls, and come. Bring your offering in Jesus' name.
Glory to God. Amen. Certainly we thank God for all you have given today. In Jesus' name. Are you ready for the word? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I ask you this morning to stand to your feet and receive our pastor. Amen. As he come, amen. And be a blessing unto us in Jesus' name. Apostle William Michael Fields. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on and give him glory. Put those hands together, won't you? And give the Lord some praise. Oh, yeah. Glory. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord, I honor the Lord Jesus Christ always because he is the boss and we love the Lord. He's been so gracious, so kind, patient towards us. And it's because of him that we're here today. How many of you know it was God that woke you up this morning? Yes. Let's give the Lord another praise. Yes. And to our assistant pastor, Elder Young, and to all of the men of God, to the deacons, mothers, missionaries, and to all of you that are here and those of you who have connected with us via live stream, praise the Lord to you. The Lord has been gracious to all of us. Yes, I said all of us. Mm -hmm. Just look down your robe and say, he's been good to all of us. Yes, and that's, yeah, that's why I believe all of us ought to have a praise. Yeah, shouldn't be nobody in the house that's not giving God praise because he's been good to all of us. And this is, of course, Clergy Appreciation Month, and we honor all of the preachers. Uh, now, I don't want anyone to think that we left the other brothers out. Uh, October 26th, we will be having Leadership Appreciation Day. That is a Saturday, but we're asking everyone to come out. We wanted to separate a day where we just thank you, say thank you to all of the leaders uh, and all of the ministers will be receiving accolades for all that they do. Certainly, myself, Nelda Young, or Minister Trey, we couldn't do what we do without their help uh, and as you heard they teach Sunday school they help with the service uh, and there are things that they do that are outside of the walls of this church because uh, preaching in the pulpit really is only 10% of ministry believe it or not they visit the sick uh, they call those that are shut in uh, and they are a tremendous help to the ministry and I'm grateful to everyone uh, that's a leader in here. Uh, our ushers do an outstanding job. Amen. Yeah. yeah, the ushers. Now, you know, they have to stand for a long time. Uh, I don't know what kind of shoes they wear, but I'm a, I might have to go get me some uh, because they could stand a long time. But everyone that works in the ministry, thank you so much for your labor of love. Father, we love you today, and we're so grateful you. You've been better than good to us. We ask now that you would bless us through your word. We need your word, Lord. We came to eat this morning. Our souls are hungry. Send your word in this place. Bless us. You know exactly what we need. Speak to us today. In Jesus' name. Say it with me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
familiar passage of scripture found in the book of Joshua. Sixth chapter, one verse I want to read in your hearing and then we'll develop the thought that the Lord put in our spirit to share with you. Joshua. My soul loves Jesus. Help me sing. My soul loves Jesus. Yeah. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus my soul loves Jesus my soul loves Jesus bless his name I woke up with that song in my spirit my soul loves Jesus. Come on, help me sing it. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless. His name. Can we stay right there for a few minutes? My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name, my soul loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus. Joshua 6 and 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it in our hearts that we may grow thereby. Look at someone before you sit down and say, release a praise and step in. Tell somebody else, release a praise and step in. Tell one more person, release a praise and then step in. Glory, release a praise, and then step in. The book of Joshua is a continuation of the history of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. In it records Israel's crossing the Jordan River into Canaan, 
after the death of Moses as well as the conquest. It would involve the conquest and the settlement of Canaan by, of course, the 12 tribes of Israel. It's actually written to record God's faithfulness, his faithfulness in fulfilling his covenant promises to Israel concerning the land of Canaan. You remember where he said, I have a land that I want to give you that's flowing with milk and with honey. And they would find out, as we know, those of us who follow the ways of God, that the promises of God very seldom go unchallenged. Uh, those of us who have heard his voice and understand that when he makes us a promise, the enemy will do everything he can do to keep us from receiving those things God has promised us. And those things that happen in between the time of the promises made and when you actually receive what he said, that's when those challenges come. We know then that Satan will do anything and everything that he can to keep us from receiving the promises of God. It is undeniable that God is a faithful God. He is faithful. Anybody that tells you that God is not faithful, you call them a liar to their face. There is no shadow of turning within him. Morning by morning, new mercies we see shouted out, great is his faithfulness. He is faithful, and because he is faithful, I'm sure he is faithful to all of his promises. He is faithful throughout generations. Oh, yes, he is. He was faithful to you. He'll be faithful to your children. Be faithful to your grandchildren. And I hear you talking back to me. Most times people wonder if God is so faithful why is it that most of his promises to us don't get fulfilled? Why don't I have it yet? Why haven't I experienced what he has promised me yet? And the truth is that in most cases, we are the ones that hinder our blessings. We're the ones. Look at someone and say, you've got to learn how to get out of your own way. There, there are three major ways that we obstruct our own blessings. The first one is because of lack of faith, unbelief. The second one is disobedience or rebellion. We got a whole lot of hard-headed, stiff-necked folks in the house that want to do it their way. And the third reason is unpreparedness. So lack of faith and unbelief comes with the inability to trust God or to rely completely on him. Most of us are not confident in God or his abilities. If Sometimes it may appear that he moves too slow or he didn't do it to our liking. We wanted him to come from the right side and he came from the left side. But the Bible teaches us that we should just trust him. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the problem may be, just trust the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Disobedience is the unwillingness to adhere to the commands of God. Because to tell the truth, sometimes God will tell you to do stuff that makes no sense to you. He'll tell you to sit down when you feel like you ought to stand up. He'll, he'll tell you to walk when you feel like you ought to run. And you have an unwillingness to adhere to his commands and plainly doing or wanting to do something different from what he has asked you to do, which simply means because of our flesh, sometimes we oppose his will. Mm-hmm. We oppose his leading because it doesn't look the way we want it to look or it doesn't feel the way we feel that it should feel. And because of this, we prefer to go another way. That's called 
disobedience. Then the third unpreparedness is another reason why our blessings are hindered. And this shows the inability of securing the promises of God. We are not eligible. We're not where he left us. We're we are in a place where he has to look for us, and instead of preparing for what you asked him for, you went somewhere else. Hallelujah. And you have not been preparing. He told Israel, if you want to get out of here, I want you to go home, sit at the table, and put all your clothes on. Hallelujah. Put your shoes on. Act like you believe I'm going to bring you out of what you've been dealing with all of these years. Just lean on somebody and say, if you want to get out, act like you want to get out. Yeah, and, and because the saints have a tendency to do all of this shouting and singing and praising, but you haven't prepared for anything you've been asking God for. Lord, I need a job, and you stay in bed all day long. Lord, I need this, and you have not prepared, hallelujah, for what you've been asking God for. Did you not know that all of us have a place that the Lord is trying to get us to? And I'm not, I'm not talking about heaven right now. I'm, I'm talking about a place where he really wants to bless you, to, to expand your borders, to increase you, to strengthen you, to bless you. We all have a place of promise and blessing just for you. Point to somebody and say, there's a place just for you. And when you realize that, we won't have to spend so much time trying to get what somebody else has. When, when you understand that God has some blessings with my name on it. Place that he wants to bring me to. A place that he has prepared just for me and my family. Just after all that I've been through, he wants me to know that there is something in store just just look down your row and say when God gets through blessing you it's going to blow your mind the things that he has in store and, and, and I know we like to talk about what what the enemy is doing but I don't want to give the devil too much credit because many times it's not the devil it's us standing in our own way yeah there are obstacles, yes, there are situations, but the God that I serve is greater than any obstacle. He's greater than any kind of situation. And when you trust God enough, when you really believe in who he is and what he can do, you don't have to wait until you get it to go on and give God some praise. Look at somebody and say, if you believe, praise him anyway. Yes, because it is true faith. People that really have faith will always be able to release a praise. Understand, because faith and praise go together. Faith is a gift from God. This is what Paul teaches us. He says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. But praise is a way for me to exercise my faith. Some of y'all don't believe that because you need to see something before you open your mouth and give God praise. But Abraham taught us in his life that, uh, hallelujah, he grew stronger as he began to believe God. And the more he believed God, the more he was able to glorify God. And uh, he teaches us, and I don't have time to go through his life, but he taught us that praise and faith go hand in hand. Scream down your row and say praise and faith go hand in hand. People with only a little bit of faith can only praise God when they have money in their pocket or when they're feeling good in their body. But somebody that really has faith, even when their body's racking with pain, their mouth will open and they'll give God. 
God the glory. So my praise then is proof of my faith. I need you to scream it in the atmosphere and say my praise is proof of my faith. I praise him because I believe his word is true. I praise him because I know he keeps his word. I praise him because he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. I praise him because I believe every word that comes out of his mouth will come true book of Joshua that uh, I read to you deals with the consummation of the redemption of Israel. God told them that uh, I have a land prepared for you. I, I have a place flowing with milk and with honey. And you know the history of the text Moses has passed and Joshua now has uh, the job of bringing the children in to the promised land but when you look back you'll understand that their faith had failed them in the wilderness this is a new generation now their mamas and papas passed away in the wilderness because hallelujah they failed to trust and believe God totally and because of their lack of faith they really had no praise so in other words no faith results in no praise and they were used to hearing murmurings and complaining every now and then a Levite would write a song and try to provoke them and push them to give God praise. One writer stood up and said, oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. They walked in the wilderness in a solitary way. Their hearts were hungry their souls were thirsty but then they cried unto the Lord he was trying to stir up a praise and when he realized he's the only one thanking God he screams in the camp and said oh that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful works to the children of men look down their way and say don't let me praise him all by myself no, but they had become so used to murmuring and complaining. I've never seen so many saints. All they can do is ridicule the move of God. They, they complain about everything. That uh, you will never have a complaint in your life uh, concerning anything if you really believe in God and his promises. Show me somebody that's always complaining and I'll show you someone who has a lack of faith. Hallelujah, because like I told you, praise is proof of faith. I don't mean an organ praise. I don't mean a, a drum praise. I mean a praise when you have no money and build to pay but your mouth is open anyway and I've got bills I've got doctor bills I've got situations but I'm still going to give God a praise listen saints when you do that you're standing your ground standing on the word I know what it looks like but I'm standing on the word of God and then when you do that you're demonstrating your faith in God's ability. Lord, I know you're able. I know you're a healer. I know you're a deliverer. I know you're a way maker. It doesn't matter what the trouble is. I trust in God. Hallelujah. David declared, I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name for how long? He said, 
forever and ever. The Israelites had developed a nasty habit of praising God only after he did something for them. After the waters came back together and uh, hallelujah, the enemy washed along the shore. The Bible says, then sang Moses and uh, Miriam and the other women grabbed their tambourines and they shouted and danced and praised God. They were used to living by sight. They only believed when the miracles came forth but their praise was short lived as soon as church was over they went back to complaining if, if they were living today as soon as they got in the parking lot they, they'd start complaining I don't have this I need that and that's how Israel was they lived by sight they only praise God after the problem was solved and after the enemies were drowned after listen anybody can praise God after the bill is paid after he's healed your body anybody can praise God after you get the job after you get a new car hallelujah even the, the heathen in the world can praise God because I got some money in my hand but it takes someone who really believes God I don't see it but I'm praising you anyhow the bill ain't paid yet but I'm praising you anyhow sick in my body I don't like what the doctor said but I'm praising you anyhow. Scream down your row. I feel like preaching. And tell your neighbor, don't wait till you see it to give God some praise. Because we walk by faith and not by uh, that's the trouble with some of you. you you're telling God I need to see it seeing is believing the devil is a liar you better praise him right now don't wait till he heals you don't, don't wait till the money comes praise him right now if you believe him you don't have to wait for the bill to be paid when he said but my God shall supply all of my need Mm. Uh, high five people say don't wait praise him now don't 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 wait praise him praise him now don't wait praise him come on talk to somebody and say what are you waiting for the just shall live by faith and faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm not praising him because I see it. I'm praising him because he said he would do something about it. And that, that's all I need is his word that's all I need touch somebody and say that's all I need is his word uh, he said he would heal it he said uh, he would make a way he said uh, he would turn it around and if he said it So uh, here we are in the text. Uh, he would speak to Joshua and say, this is a new generation. Uh, hallelujah. These are children who were born uh, in the wilderness. And uh, over the years, they've heard nothing but complaining and the murmurings. And uh, I want to show them that uh, it does not matter what they see. They should only give me glory and praise me because I'm a God that keeps 
his word. He would bring them to the brink of the Jordan River. He would appear in a theophany to Joshua and Joshua would turn and see the angelic being standing with the sword in his hand and he would say whose side are you on? And the angel would answer and say I am the captain of the Lord's host. Now only God could say that. And the next words that he speaks to Joshua were the same words that he would speak to Moses. Take off your shoes because the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. Now there's something else about the removal of shoes. Hallelujah. That brings light to me because whenever in Old Testament times the fathers or the elders of the city hallelujah wanted to transact the purchase of property hallelujah they did not just write their name on something but the removal of their shoe signified the transaction had gone through and God wanted Joshua to know everything I give you the transaction has already gone through I don't care how many enemies are there how many people say you can have it hallelujah the transaction has already gone through I've already paid for it I've, I've already laid it aside for you so I need you to help me preach and tell somebody everywhere God takes you the transaction has already gone through so don't let nobody tell you you don't belong there don't don't let no demon tell you you can't have it I've already paid for it uh, hallelujah don't you understand the wealth of the wicked has been stored up for the righteous you just show up put your suit on put on your dress grab your bag and go down there and say I came to get what God said belongs to me hallelujah I feel like preaching in here if you don't believe me kick your shoes off right now put off your shoe and see I'm getting ready to take it I'm getting ready to get what God said belongs to me it's already paid for he said everywhere your foot treads I'm going to give it to you everywhere you walk every tree you mark I'm going to give it to you it's yours it's yours high five three people say it's yours he would speak to Joshua you remember the text and he would say see I've already given you the city. I shut the city up. Even the king of the city, nobody comes out, nobody goes in. I'm holding it for you. I'm holding the blessing for you. I see it like putting it on layaway. I already put it up there. All you've got to do is walk through the door go to the counter and say God sent me here to get what's belonging to me he said I gave you the city and when Joshua looks he sees a city that's been impregnated by a wall the wall was so wide until a garrison of soldiers could march or ride around the perimeter of the city but the instruction was for six days I want you to walk one time but on the seventh day I want you to walk seven times hallelujah and I know the wall hallelujah is massive 
I know it looks intimidating but I just want you to walk and when you get up in the morning not yet he said I don't want you to say anything out of your mouth I want you to just walk I'd like to think that God gave them those instructions because he knows our tendency to get discouraged and start complaining he knows our tendency to give up and stop walking hallelujah in obedience and then we'll start trying to do things our own way that's why he told them in the 10th verse do not shout I don't want you to even talk Joshua commanded not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout hallelujah that's the trouble with some of you you talk too much you got too much to say out of your mouth you don't want to do it because you don't like it I don't like where I am I don't know why God told me to do this I need you to help me preach I need you to scream at somebody and say shut up and keep walking I know you don't like it but shut up and keep walking I know you don't like what the doctor said but shut up and keep walking I know they lied on you and you want to get in her face but I hear the Holy Ghost say shut up and keep walking I know they did you wrong and you want to get revenge I know they turned everything you did upside down but I hear the Holy Ghost say shut your mouth and keep walking I don't want you to say nothing until it's time to say I don't want you to open your mouth until it's time to open your mouth let me do the talking I'll fix it for you I'm gonna make it so all you gotta do is give me the glory and give me the praise hallelujah some of y'all ran your mouth all week and then when you come to church you're quiet as a lamb ran your mouth on the phone talking about this and that and you come to church and act like you lost your voice some of y'all been running your mouth all week long I don't like this I don't like that and then when you come to church somebody's gotta beg you to give God some glory he said shut your mouth I don't even want to hear the animals shut up every cow shut up the sheep and just walk around one time for six days and they did what the Lord told them to do but on the seventh day they got up early in the morning and they walked around seven times hallelujah they walked and I know the enemy must have looked at them and said what's going on they ain't saying nothing they're just walking in circles what kind of God would bring you to a wall and tell you don't bring a chisel don't bring a battering ram don't bring a ladder just shout when I tell you to shout get somebody by the hand and say neighbor 
today. All you'll need is a praise. That's all you'll need. Get ready. Because your wall is about to come down. Get ready. Because your high place getting ready to come down. Fix yourself and walk a little bit. We walk by faith and not by sight. Walk. Even if they laugh at you, walk. Even if it seems like it don't make no sense, walk. Even if you're tired, walk. Even though you're struggling, walk, baby. Walk it out. Even though you're discouraged, pull somebody, say, walk it out. Hallelujah. It won't be long from now. You won't see it no more. Walk, woman. Walk, man. I've been bruised, but I'm walking. I've been in trouble, but I'm walking. Because he promised me that if I obey his word, there's no good thing that he'll withhold from me. And if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, Victory shall be mine. I feel like preaching in this place. Put your arm around somebody and say, Walk, walk through your trial, walk through your pain. Come on, children feels like walking with me and if you can't walk just move your big toe if you can't move your toe move your finger and let the devil know I'm not staying out here for much longer I'm not gonna stay out here much longer I'm getting ready to get it did you hear what I said? Put your arms around somebody and send a neighbor. I got a word for you. What you've been praying for. You're getting ready to get it. Just walk. Come on, children, walk. I know it don't make sense. But if you feel like kicking off your shoe, kick off your shoe and scream in the atmosphere, the blessing is ready for me. Deliverance is ready for me. My blessing is on the other side of that wall. Walk, children. Step around your bills. Walk around your sickness. Walk around your pain. Walk around your tears. Walk around your fear. Walk around your burden. Walk around your struggle. Walk. Walk around your difficulty. Hallelujah. Stop right there. Stop right there. Wherever you are, get ready. Hallelujah. Wherever you're standing, get ready. Prepare yourself to send up a praise. And when I give the signal, I want you to shout. Wait a minute. I want you to know that you don't shout with your hands. I want you to know that you don't shout.
shout with your feet. When I tell you to shout, open up your mouth and scream out of praise. Did you hear what I said? Are you ready to get your blessing? Are you ready to be delivered? There's just one more thing. After you shout, you got to step in there. After you shout, you got to step in there. You can't stay where you are. You got to step all the way in. Are you ready? When I raise my right hand and you hear the organ play, I want you to scream how to praise. Are you ready, refuge? Scream. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're coming down, they're coming down, coming down, yeah. Don't just stand there, step in. Don't just stand there, step in and get your blessing. Step in there. Some of y'all ain't moved yet. You won't get it until you praise me. Did you hear what I said? You won't get it until you praise me. Yeah, and if you receive it, step all the way in, come in, and take what you need, come in, and get your miracle, come in, and get your healing, come in, and get your breakthrough, come in, I can't hear you, you be praising him. You ought to be coming. You ought to be grabbing. Say yeah. Release a praise and step in. 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 Hallelujah. Step in. Release a praise and step on in. Release a praise. say we're in here now touch somebody say we're in here now we may as well get everything we need come on children walk around the city and get what you need come on children walk around the temple and get what you need yeah release a praise and step in glory to God yeah Yeah. 
hands. Lift those hands. No, no earthly weapon, no arrows, no spears, no, no battering ram. Just shout and I'll bring your walls down. He was teaching them the essence of faith. You don't have to wait until you see it. I think that's the other reason why they had to walk for six days. I don't see nothing but this wall in front of me. Shut your mouth. Stop rehearsing what you see. Just walk. Shut up and walk. I know you don't like it, but walk. And when I tell you to open your mouth and shout and the wall came down flat look at somebody say flat that had to be God because the wall could have fell on them but it fell flat as if someone took their foot and stepped on the wall. I'd like to think that if we have enough faith to praise God in spite of what's in front of us, he'll step on the situation. He'll step. I hear him say, I'll even make your enemies your footstool. I'm going to keep my word. Just believe everything. Don't take some of the promise and leave the rest. Take it all. He's going to do what he said. Lift your hands where you are. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Father, I thank you for the word that you have shared with us. <laughs> Glory. I thank you. Some of us have been through so much and certainly, Lord, you have increased our faith. And if our faith has been increased, so should our praise. If our trust has been increased, so should our praise. Thank you for your word. Take the seed that's been planted and bring forth harvest. When I say amen, I want you to scream out another praise. When I say amen, I want you to yell out a praise like you've never yelled out before. And watch the Holy Ghost move again in this temple. Amen. Send that up, The altar is ready. The altar is ready. You desire prayer. You want to be baptized into that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Yeah. Come. 
you have a special need in your life come come make your way to this altar you have a special need come and bring your praise with you bring a hallelujah with you come The Lord bless you. Come. Come. Come.
Is there one today you want to make Greater Refuge Temple your place of worship? You want to be a part of this congregation? Come so we can extend to you the right hand of fellowship. You want to be a part of this church? You want me to be your pastor? Come. Come. The doors of the church are open. Is there one? If not refuge, put those hands together. Glory. I want to get a sacrifice from you. I'm not going to tell you what to give in this sacrifice. It's between you and the Lord. But I want you to make sacrifice in his presence. And we say it all the time. That sacrifice is giving something that you feel that you need or want for yourself. But you're saying to the Lord, Father, I want you to have this. I want to make sacrifice in your presence. And I am aware that you may, some of you may not have anything to give in this sacrificial offering. I would just ask you to come touch the basket. Your obedience is then better than the sacrifice. We pray that God would put something in your hand for the next time. Because his word declares he gives seed to the sower. Father, we thank you for what you've done in this place, how you have moved. We cannot pay you for anything that you do for us, but we want to make sacrifice in your presence. Receive our sacrifices, Lord. Even those who don't have anything to give at this time as they come, touch the basket out of obedience, they too will receive a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone who can stand, stand, won't you? Turn to the wall, follow the instruction of the usher, bring that sacrifice. bless you and thank you so much for joining us today in worship it is my prayer that you are enlightened enriched and encouraged by the word of God that went forth always praying that the Lord would strengthen your hearts and mind bring you to a place that he wants you to be always God is able to do just that and just in case you are looking for a church home want you to feel free to be a part of Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. We'll be glad to take you under watch care and we'll do our very best to help you find a permanent place of worship in your area. We all need the Word of God and we all need a place where we can go and be fed the truth of God. And if you would like to plant a seed in this ministry, you haven't been able to do it yet feel free follow the instructions on the bottom of your screen our technician will make that information available to you admin at grtdc.org you can send your prayer request your request for membership 
and someone from our staff will get back to you. Looking forward to meeting you again. Join us next week, won't you? But until then, be careful, be prayerful, and be holy. Shalom, shalom.